The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has stymied attempts by investment companies to invest in Bitcoin and has done nothing to resolve the legal and practical ambiguity around exchange traded products, according to remarks from SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce at the British Blockchain Association this week, criticizing the agency she serves. Moreover, Peirce criticized the SEC's failure to provide clarity on qualified custodians for crypto and when digital assets are securities. Joining us now to discuss is none other than SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce herself. Welcome, Commissioner. It's a delight to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a delight to have you. All right. So the SEC published VanEx Bitcoin ETF application. The clock is ticking and the agency now has 45 days to approve or deny the application or extend the review period. What are the chances of approval this time around, Commissioner? Well, I can't speak to any particular application. And of course, I should say that my views are my own views and not necessarily those of the commissioner or my fellow commissioners. And I think that is relevant here. Um, I have looked at past ET, ETP applications a bit differently than my colleagues and have thought that we should move forward. Every application is considered on its own facts and circumstances. Um, but I do think that that some of the, the reasons that we've denied ETP applications for Bitcoin, Bitcoin related ETPs in the past um, have differed from the way that we've approached similar products um, based, for example, on precious metals. Uh, well, with new leadership coming in, is there a chance of a mentality toward innovation changing and perhaps warming up to something like an ETP or F product? Yeah, I, I agree with Emily that that does make a difference. The, the likely incoming chairman, he's awaiting confirmation now in the Senate, is Gary Gensler, who's someone who knows this space um, very well. He's been teaching at MIT, um, teaching courses on, on blockchain and crypto, so he's very familiar with the issues, and I think that'll give him um, a fresh perspective and, and help the agency to take a fresh look. Commissioner Peirce, welcome back. Um, you've expressed some concern about this idea of first mover advantage. Well, it's a great for our show, of course. Um, first mover, it, the first mover to apply for an ETF would potentially get a lot more assets. Why not just batch them all together? You have several applications for, for a Bitcoin ETF right now. Why not batch them all together? And then approve them if they're going to be approved. Approve them all together and go full Oprah. You know, you get an ETF, you get an ETF, you get an ETF. Um, well, I, I think that, that we have sort of changed this whole notion of first mover because people come in and then they wait a long time. So it's almost difficult to know now who the first mover was. So it's almost like the, the, the it's the race on to be the first approved. And I think you make a good point that um, that uh, it, it might make sense to do things in a batch. Um, but a lot of this just depends on how things come in. And again, I don't know whether my colleagues are going to change their, their views. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And everyone has to be considered on its own facts. Each one of these applications has been has been slightly different from the others. And so we'll have to take that into account, too. But I hear what you're saying. So when we last spoke, we, I also asked you about companies that are loading up their balance sheet with Bitcoin and potentially acting as a as a form of an ETF. Um, any further discussions at the SEC about that? And and is there any concern that somebody might, let's say, buy an old zombie company that's still publicly traded, load it up with Bitcoin, and operate it like an ETF? It, it, where are the uh, where are the signals to the SEC that this might be a problem and that this is acting like it shouldn't? Well, I mean, we're certainly, I'm certainly following the trend. I think that people have to realize that if you run your, if, if you, if you take an operating company and you put some of your, your balance sheet in Bitcoin, that's one thing. If you're running the whole entity as, as just that, that's a quite different thing. And it might implicate some securities laws. So you, you better be careful before you uh, adopt that kind of a strategy. There's no, there's no specific uh, uh, point, though, where you say, uh, you know, there, is there like a percentage of the balance sheet where you say this is more? I mean, there, Bitcoin there's specific, ETF. yeah, sorry, there, there's specific rules around when you flip over into becoming sort of an, an inadvertent investment company. It's a little more complicated with Bitcoin as the underlier, as, as the underlier. But again, I mean, 
so far what I've seen is is not operating companies completely changing over to being just about holding Bitcoin. If that happened, I think I really do think people need to consider the securities law ramifications of that. Welcome back, Commissioner. First, I'm going to change the topic for a moment and uh, go to what is now the current wild west of the crypto world, which is NFTs. Um, and some people are comparing NFTs to the ICO boom of, of, of a few years ago. And so my question for you is, um, do you expect NFTs to eventually get on the SEC's radar in terms of deciding whether or not they are securities? And I'd just be interested to hear what you, what you think of this this whole phenomenon in general. Well, I mean, I think it's it's interesting to see uh, certainly a surprising phenomenon in terms of the dollars involved um, and and the enthusiasm involved. I, I we're always looking at things to see whether or not they might be securities. I think in the case of NFTs, they might also fall into some other category. But we look at each one on its facts and circumstances again and see. I mean, because because of the fact that they are non fungible, um, it it maybe makes them look less like securities. But again, you have to you have to assess every one on its own facts and circumstances. So I'm certainly not making any kind of blanket statements. And just more generally, what do you think of the NFT boom that's going on? Do you think it's there's it's it's becoming a bubble? Do you think it's going to radically democratize the art world? I'm just curious what your perception is, because it's quite an interesting yeah. phenomenon. It is an interesting phenomenon. And, and I, I I think what it to me, I, I don't know whether it's a bubble now or what's going to happen to it, but but I think w the kernel of what's there, which is trying to figure out a way to um, to pay to compensate artists for their work, is a really fascinating one, and I and I think that that's something that a lot of people it's a problem a lot of people have been trying to solve, and so um, this this may be one way of solving it. Maybe this is the initial attempt at solving it, and there's going to have to be refinement. Um, but I think it's it's an interesting idea for that reason. That's one of the things that people have looked at blockchain um, as a potential solution. Commissioner, you also, in your remarks earlier this week, criticized the SEC for a lack of clarity on qualified custodians for crypto and when digital assets should be or not securities. I'm wondering if you see any priorities in outlining and having more clarity on these issues? Well, I, I think that the SEC has been trying to get input. Um, and, you know, as I, as I also noted in that speech, people have been a little bit slow to provide us input. So the more input we get, the more likely it is that we're going to be able to address this issue. Um, but I, 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 I am hopeful, too. Again, I'm looking at the incoming chair, and, and this is an area that I plan to talk to him about, too, and to say, look, Affording people clarity is just allowing people to enter into the space and do so with confidence that they're complying with the rules. And so um, that's something that's the least we owe to people is just to give them a way to legally do this and, and to give them comfort um, about it. So I'm going to continue pushing for it. Commissioner Purse, there's a bill right now uh, working its way on Capitol Hill that would help clarify the uh, the regulations. Um, has, the, has the SEC or have you in particular had any input uh, with its design or, or with any aspect of it? Yes, yeah, so there are a couple of bills that are out there. Um, in, in the Token Taxonomy Act, I believe, was reintroduced, and then there's another bill as well that would try to encourage the, well, it would direct the SEC and the CFTC to put together a committee which could then consider some of these issues. Um, uh, you know, I've talked in, in, in the past to folks on the Hill who are behind those bills about, about this space and, and um, you know, they're, they're pushing forward to give us some kind of a, a statutory nudge to move forward. And, and I appreciate their interest in this area. Um, and I think, that some of these things we could do on our own. Certainly, we in the CFTC could sit down and put together a task force, um, which which I think is always useful um, because we're both regulators in the in this space, and it's sometimes difficult to see where the lines should be drawn. Um, so even if those bills don't move forward, there's some things that we can think about and be doing on our own. Commissioner Purse, 
Just to go back to the ETFs, why do you think Canada was able to approve several Bitcoin ETFs, but the U.S. has not been able to? Well, to be to be fair, the standards in Canada and the standards in the U.S. I don't know whether they're the same, and so that's that's one question where you have to start. Um, but you know, second, as as I've said, I think we in the United States could have could have approved an exchange traded product long ago using the rules that we've applied to other kinds of products, um, and so it, it's an unfortunate aspect of our uh, regulatory approach to this area so far, which is that we have, we've taken this view that because it's crypto, it gets treated differently. And, the, you know, to some extent, that's rational. You have to think about this new asset class and you have to wade in carefully. And this is all motivated by um, the securities regulators native instinct, which is to be very protective and very cautious and very careful. Um, but, you know, I, I hope that we'll learn from what the Canadians have done. We get a chance to watch how it's working up there, and um, maybe that'll motivate us to then move forward. So I think it's important that you point that out because that is yet another factor that should nudge us forward. Just one final quick question. Are there any specific areas where you foresee the new incoming chair, uh, Gary Gensler, as differing from the former leadership? Any any kind of specific areas where his attitude or approach is likely to be markedly different? Well, as an initial matter, it's important to remember that there's, a, there's going to be a lot on his agenda. He's going to be getting there, kind of getting his arms around um, the issues at the agency. We've had a very um, a very exciting beginning of the year with all of the trading around GameStop and the other meme, meme stocks. And so part of what we're doing now is working through sorting through those issues. But I, you know, I think what he brings to the job in terms of crypto is the base understanding. And so no one has to start um, trying to explain to him the potential for the technology um, or how it works because he already knows that. And so for him, I think he can dive right in and start wrestling with the legal issues and, and the, the, the policy issues um, that, that come up. And I think that'll be, that'll be a much easier place to, to start for people who are talking to him from the outside and for me as well. Um, and, and so I'm just I'm optimistic that we're going to make some progress.